linoleic acid itself is not a backbone or a, a directly feeding into ceramide biosynthesis, but its peroxidation products might activate that process. A 2019 redux biology study linked 4-HNE to ceramide accumulation via the activation of stress pathways in muscle tissue. Uh, similarly, a 2017 paper published in the Journal of Lipid Research suggests that linoleic acid's arachidonic acid metabolites could stoke inflammation, and then that is boosting ceramide accumulation. So linoleic acid is perhaps less and less the primary culprit, but its peroxidation products more and more appear to be the problem. I presented some inconvenient data where in the humans, the diets that were higher in saturated fats appeared to worsen insulin resistance compared to the diets high in the polyunsaturated fat from seed oils. Here's the context that I believe is relevant and perhaps helps us reconcile some of this and perhaps allows a lot of various camps to still remain friendly in this discussion. Perhaps saturated fats are a problem when consumed with carbs because when carbs are consumed, the insulin elevation will directly promote the saturated fats like palmitate to go into the ceramide biosynthesis pathway. That is important because palmitate is not only the most commonly consumed saturated fat, but it is the backbone of ceramides. Again, the lipid that I've focused on the most as a cause of insulin resistance. But the saturated fat would need to be directed into that pathway. Insulin does that. We've published that paper. I've done that myself, finding that chronically elevated insulin does stimulate ceramide accrual by shunting palmitate into ceramide biosynthesis. So perhaps if a diet is high in carbs, combining it with high in saturated fats might be more problematic, specifically with regards to insulin resistance. And then similarly, with linoleic acid, perhaps it's primarily a problem when it's consumed without antioxidants, or rather consumed in a body that has a low antioxidant capacity. If peroxidation is allowed to occur, then the otherwise benign linoleic acid, at least in the context of insulin resistance, is enabled to wreak havoc on insulin signaling via the peroxidation product production. Let me just state all of that again. Based on the human evidence primarily, and even going through the animal and the cell culture work, <clears throat> perhaps saturated fats are confounded or become problematic when consumed with carbohydrates in a way that polyunsaturated fats aren't because the high insulin coming from the glucose spike will direct saturated fats into ceramide biosynthesis. But linoleic acid is not a substrate. It's not a building block for ceramides, again, which I believe to be the main mediator of insulin resistance. And so the high insulin level isn't directly making the linoleic acid promote ceramide accrual. In contrast, or sort of in parallel, the linoleic acid becomes more problematic, less benign, when there is a greater tendency for it to undergo peroxidation, which is happening in the context of a high oxidative stress environment. And then the high oxidative stress and then the inflammation that comes with that will then promote insulin resistance. But if the linoleic acid is defended from undergoing peroxidation, then perhaps it's less of a problem. Now, importantly, linoleic acid undergoes peroxidation so readily that even when you are getting, even if you were to drink straight vegetable oils, which is really seed oil, some of it is already, has under, already undergone peroxidation. That's a very important uh, consideration. Also, it's important to consider that a lot of the seed oils that people consume come with a lot of things that have been added in order through the chemical industrial process of taking something like soybean, which doesn't naturally give an oil, but then extracting an oil from it. So what's the takeaway as we come to the end now? I believe at least some conclusion could be that linoleic acid is a naturally occurring fat that you cannot completely avoid. And indeed, you shouldn't 
try to avoid it completely. You can't. It exists in nature in all of these natural fats, particularly very healthy animal fats. But as we flood our diet, which we have done globally, we eat too much of it, perhaps uh, in the presence of an oxidative stress environment. We've already stressed it through frying it or etc. Then we're brewing the accumulation of all these harmful peroxides like 4-H&E and 13-HODE and more. And then those will... I believe the evidence strongly suggests directly compromise insulin sensitivity via the distinct mechanisms that I mentioned earlier. So as much as I am a defender of dietary fat, I do suggest that we enjoy natural fats more than refined seed oils, especially those that come from animals and fruits, the fruit fats being coconuts and olives. Thanks for listening to this short lecture. I hope you'll join me next time. And until then, more knowledge, better health.